This video is a follow on from the previous one in the playlist and we're going to look at how we can build a Python class from a given UML class diagram. If you have not yet looked at the previous video in the playlist, I recommend you do so before you view this particular video. In the previous video, we considered this specification here. From the specification, we extracted these verbs and nouns. Using the verbs and nouns together with an understanding of the original specification, we went on to develop a UML class diagram, which can be seen here. Now in this video, I'm going to show how we can convert this class diagram to a Python class. Now I'm going to move the class to the side here, as you can see. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go step by step as to how I can build the Python class from this particular class diagram. And the first thing I'm going to do is to highlight this region of the class diagram here in red and bold font. And we're going to see how this bit of the class diagram becomes code in Python. Here you can see the snippet of Python code that relates to the bit of the UML class diagram that I've shown in red. Now the first thing we can see in the code is I have the word class here, which obviously is how we begin every class definition as a programmer. Then you can see we have the word account in the class diagram here, and that is the name of my class. And of course I follow this name by the usual column. If I come here to this part of the UML class diagram, we can see I have the underscore underscore init underscore underscore method and have a look here and you can see I have that method in the code snippet. And here you can see in the diagram I have self, balance and name and they appear here as self, balance and name. And of course, in the code, I have the colon here. If I come over to this region of the class diagram, you can see I have self.balance and self.name. Well, this is where self.balance appears, and this is where self.name appears. And you can see that they are both indented four spaces within this particular initialization method. And of course, this particular Python keyword DEF is what defines the start of a particular method within a Python class. And we can see that this keyword DEF is in fact indented four spaces within the class that we're building. When we instantiate an instance of this particular class, i.e. an object of this class, it will require us to pass in the balance and the name. Now whatever value is passed to here, we can see that the value appears here in the code and that will be assigned to this particular variable here. Likewise, whatever we pass to name, well that value, which will also appear here, will be assigned to this particular variable here. Now of course, these variables you can see have self in front of them and that's because these particular variables will belong to that instance that we're creating, that object that we're creating. Let's now move on to the next method showing in the UML diagram, and it's the credit one, which I'm highlighting in red font here. Now, this particular method will appear in the class diagram using this code snippet that is appearing now. And we can see that, as usual, we start with the definition DEF, and then, of course, the name of the method is credit because that's the name of the method as defined in the UML class. If we look at the UML class, we can see that in brackets we have self and deposit and they appear here within the header of this particular method. And of course, as usual, we have the colon here and then we have the four spaces appearing here. If I now have a look at this line of code, what it's going to do, it's going to carry out the functionality of this particular method. And it's a straightforward method. I haven't chosen a specification which will involve lots of algorithmic design here. I'm choosing a straightforward spec because I'm trying to concentrate on the syntax of 
a class and I've chosen something quite specific that will not involve us in lots of complicated functionality within the method. But what we can see is that this particular method here expects to receive the deposit. Now that's the amount of money that the customer wants to put into the bank. And we can see whatever value is passed to here is used here in the code and we can see that we're going to be adding that to this variable which is going to be holding the balance of that particular customer and then we assign that to the balance so in other words if the balance was 50 quid and I'm passing in a hundred here that 100 is added to the 50 that's stored in here that then gets assigned to this overriding the 50 that was there I'm replacing it now with the 150 because of course 50 plus 100 is 150. Let's now consider the next method in the UML diagram shown here in red font the debit and if we have a look at what's in brackets we can see we have self and withdrawal. If we look at the code snippet responsible for implementing this particular method we can see it here and you can see it starts off with the word DEF here it has the colon and in between we can see it has the name debit and it has the parameters self and withdrawal so we can see that this bit is as shown here in the UML diagram and of course this is the code that I'm going to type in to perform the functionality of the debit method because what will be passed here the withdrawal is the amount of money the customer wishes to withdraw from the bank and we can see the withdrawal is used here and it's subtracted from the variable here with the result being assigned to this variable consequently we can see that the balance will go down by the amount withdrawn by the customer Moving on to the next method, which is this one here, the get underscore balance, and in brackets you can see I've got self. Well, the snippet of code responsible for implementing this method is shown here. And you can see that I've given it the name get balance, which is the name as it appears within the UML class diagram. And of course, it has the parameter self, which is also as it appears in the class diagram. Now, the line of code for this particular method is shown here and what this is going to do it's going to return the value that's stored in this variable and of course this variable is the data attribute here within the class definition so when I create an instance of this particular class and I send a message that invokes this what this method will allow us to do is to gain access to the content of this particular variable the value of this variable now I have to stress that this approach is not necessarily the way in which it should be done in Python this is showing what many other languages do they have a function that allows you access to the variables that are the data fields of the class definition so it is possible in Python to gain direct access to this without having the need for this particular method. Now I'm going to show you how to do that in later videos. But for the time being, we can say that this method is tied to this data field here. Why? Well, because it's responsible, as you can see in the code over here, for returning the value there. So when you invoke this method, what it will do is return what's stored in here which we can see from the class is clearly uh, a data attribute a data field of the class and consequently will become the data field the data attribute of the instance of the class we'll now move on to the next method which we can see is the get underscore name and in brackets self now this particular method we're going to see is tied to this data field here this data attribute in the sense that the method will return the value stored in this particular data field so let's have a look at the code snippet that'll do this we can see it here and straight away you can see I've give it the name get name which is equivalent to what it is in the class diagram and in brackets you can see we have the word self 
And what this is doing is going to return self.name. So in other words, it's going to return what's stored in this variable here, which is the data field that definition of the class. And of course, it'll be an instance variable when we create an object of this particular class. So this self.name will be an instance variable of the object where the object is based on the class we're looking at here. We'll now go on to consider the next method, which you can see here, which is set underscore name, and in brackets you can see there is self comma name. So there's two parameters, and of course the self parameter we know needs to be there when we're dealing with classes, and that's been explained in previous videos in this playlist. But the one I'm interested in discussing here is this particular parameter, name. So if we have a look at the code that will implement this particular specification, it is shown here. And straight away, you can see that I've chosen the name of it to be set underscore name, which is exactly the same as it appeared in the UML class diagram. And over here, you can see I've got self and name. Now, this particular parameter is going to receive the new name of the customer, whatever that may be. And that new name will be used here in the code, and it will be assigned to this variable self.name. And of course, this variable is the data field or the data attribute shown in the class here. And of course, this variable is the instance variable, because of course, when we invoke this particular method, we'll be sending a message to the instance of this particular class, i.e. an object of this class. So what we can see is with this particular method here, it'll alter whatever's been stored here. So for example, let's say the customer's name was Rita Jones. So Rita Jones would be stored in here. If when I send the message to invoke this, I pass into this parameter the name Rita Hartley, then the name Rita Hartley here will be assigned to this variable, replacing what was there before, which would have been Rita Jones, and now it will be storing Rita Hartley. So let's consider the UML class diagram again, which we can see here. And we know in this video we've gone and produced snippets of code for each of the elements of the particular UML class diagram. And those snippets are actually shown here. You can see that all of the methods are appearing one after another to the last one, which is the set name method. Now, all of those snippets now form the class which we can see here. So we've taken this UML class diagram and we've converted it into the code of Python, as you can see. As a reminder, remember these three methods here are not typically what you would use when you're writing Python code. Remember, these three methods allow us to access these two variables up here. And of course, in Python, we can directly access these variables, which is not always a good idea, by the way, because it's always useful to hide these variables, which is something I'm going to talk about in later videos. But I'm now going to stop the video at this point, because in the next video, what I'm going to do is to create an instance of this class and ensure that all of the methods I've defined here will actually work in the way in which I'm expecting them to work. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?